President Obama's former top economic advisor, Larry Summers, says there's no real way to shrink the government and says, in fact, it really needs to get bigger. What? Is this true? Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge <laughs> Andrew Napoli. Sorry, that was my genuine reaction. What? Uh, but, but isn't this all on ideological lines? Yeah, it is on ideological lines. And of course, Larry Summers is the former president of Harvard, the former secretary of the Treasury, the former chairman of the Council of Economic so Advisors. So he can't hold a job. He can't hold a job. Good, Brian. <laughs> From his point of view, if the government continues to provide entitlements to the same number of people as it does today under the same circumstances, then he's right. You can't shrink it. But if you listen to what Paul Ryan is saying, for those under 55, they should have a free market alternative. Right. If they don't have a free market alternative, then the government's debt by the end of the next president's term could be $20 trillion. That would be utterly unsustainable because the interest on that debt would be a trillion a year. The government only collects two and a half trillion a year in taxes. So uh, more than a third of that is going to go to debt service. That doesn't leave enough money to run the government. And no one will lend more money to the government because right. of fear they're not going to get paid back. Sure. So Larry Summers, who helped the president with the stimulus, and he was one of his economic gurus, so he, the president listened who to him. Who was quite frustrated, evidently. Yes, he was. Absolutely. Yes, he was. He's saying the government is unshrinkable. And really, that sets up what this November election is all about. It, it absolutely. With Paul Ryan there who wants to make some smart choices to save some things, we might actually make the big government more effective yesterday I was talking, and smaller. Yesterday I was talking to my wonderful mother. I will not tell you her age, but she and my father are at an age where they're taking advantage of Medicare. She said, Andrew, is Paul Ryan going to cut our Medicare? I said, Ma, you are nowhere near 55. <laughs> the Ryan proposal, I'm older than 55. The Ryan proposal only applies to those 55 and under. But here's the thing. When Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid were challenged in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said they're optional. The government right. does not have to pay that money. The government is not holding your money for you as FDR promised. Well, see, I don't the Congress can spend it or not spend it. But I don't get that because it's, it's a deal. We paid into it. You ex there's an expectation that it'll be Correct. There. It's a moral deal, right. but it's not a legal obligation on the part of the Congress. So the Republicans say, let's offer a younger generation another option, one that would allow them to invest their own money and save the government cash. Well, where, where's the messaging gone wrong in that? Because is it just that, that it's much easier to say they're going to throw grandma off the cliff? Yes, I was just going to say that. Granny over the cliff, uh, which was hor uh, horrific but brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, has, has blurred the message and has scared otherwise decent people into fearing right. that uh, the government saving money is going to take money away from them. And that's really a play on Throw Mama from the Train, the Billy Crystal movie. And Danny uh, DeVito. You know who understood all of this? Oh. Phyllis Diller. I talked to her last week. Really, did? <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. Hey, and by the way, since Too when soon. did your mom call you Andrew? I thought you made her call you Judge. Uh, uh, when he's I in changed, trouble. I changed a few years. You did? Right. Okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say how wonderful that your parents are still with you. They're very, very active. They're very yeah. thin and athletic. They're probably watching now. Well, I'm sure they're They're probably up. So <laughs> you've, actually, you know, when you think about it, you've got one side that says, uh, you know, with the Republicans, they're going to throw grandma, you know, off the cliff. But the other side, the Republicans could say, but the Democrats want to throw your grandkids under the bus because the way things are going right now, it won't be there for them. Correct. At some point, the government would collapse or default as we approach 20 trillion uh, in debt. And some type of Even Larry Summers would agree with that. Someone's going to get thrown from some mode of transportation, <laughs> is what you're saying. <laughs> thank you very much, Judge. Well, We're right. throwing you off the couch. All right, I'm out of here. Right. Judge, thank you. Be very careful much. on your way out. Thank you. Well, some new developments in states across this nation in the immigration debate as we await a key hearing in Arizona today on its controversial show your papers law. Now, the Supreme Court left that provision intact earlier this summer when it ruled on the immigration law overall uh, from the state of Arizona, but now civil rights groups are trying to block the implementation of that particular part. In the meantime, we've seen some rulings this week just came in on immigration laws in Alabama and Georgia. So there's a lot happening. Judge Andrew Napolitano is here, Fox Senior Judicial Analyst, to help us work through it all. So just take us back, if you will, Judge, to the Supreme Court ruling on the Arizona immigration law. Show your papers, stand, but it 
but there was with a little bit of a disclaimer on that. Yes, wasn't there? yes, uh, there was a disclaimer, Jenna. Basically, the Supreme Court said, look, when the police stop you, they ask you for some identification, a driver's license or something else. They then take that identification and they run it through a computer in their car or back at the headquarters to see if there's other information that they need to know about you. In the process of doing that, they can ask for additional paperwork like, are you, a legal, are you legally here? However, the Supreme Court said, here's the caveat. If it turns out that the police are stopping people on a pretext in order to find out if they are legally here, so something the Constitution stopping, prohibits. So a pretext meaning what, Judge? Meaning not a real basis to stop you. So they not have a crime, made up, not right, an They have made crime. up the reason to stop you because they think you're here illegally and they want to examine your papers. The Supreme Court said if that happens, then this portion of the Arizona law will be struck. So today a hearing commences in Phoenix, Arizona, in which civil rights groups and others will try to demonstrate that the police are in fact stopping people under a pretext, a false, false pretext, reason, right. uh, in order to ascertain their immigration status. Now it's interesting because while we're watching this hearing in Arizona, we also have the states of Alabama and Georgia. Right. And they've had to tackle similar parts of their immigration law and they've come up with some interesting results. What have those been? Alabama instructed uh, school officials to inquire into the immigration status of children whom they suspected to be here illegally. No crime. Right. No pretext of a crime. Just that there are little kids in the school. Correct. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, that's the appellate court right below the Supreme Court, said you can't do that because you're making a, you're interfering with the child's freedom on the basis of a subjective hunch or the way the child appears. So that's out. Alabama and Georgia also have the show your papers statute and the 11th Circuit said that stands unless a pretext is being used. So really a lot of this depends on how the implementation of this part of the law is rolled out. The exactly. experience of the community exactly. when police officers do this. What do you think though as a judge legally the ruling is here uh, when it comes to you know as you're watching it being implemented and seeing if whether or not there's some laws being You know, my, my own view is the show your papers is very dangerous because show your papers leads to what are you doing here? And what are you doing here leads to where did you come from? And where did you come from leads to where are you going? That's not America. That's not the type of power we ordinarily put in the hands of the police, especially if those inquiries are based on race or physical appearance. You know, we're going to have to run, but love to talk to you more about that and also <laughs> some of the voter identification laws, because all of it seems intertwined as far as the identification and, and who you are and why you're here. And some do you have any idea on you now, Jenna? I do not. All right. <laughs> But John, John can vouch for me. As Judge, will I. <laughs> Judge, thank you very much. Appreciate it Pleasure. as always. Interesting story here. A federal appeals court now ruling that Texas can cut off funding for Planned Parenthood clinics. The ruling comes as trial is about to start over whether state money can go to organizations that are tied to abortion providers. Let's hammer all this out because Judge Andrew Napolitano is here to help us do just that, Fox News senior judicial analyst. So, Judge, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of debate in this country over whether or not the federal government should and states should fund Planned Parenthood because they do refer people to and give them counseling with regard to abortion. They don't perform abortions Correct. at Planned Parenthood. Correct. What does this ruling say about where this whole argument is? Well, the Texas legislation prohibits the uh, Texas equivalent of the Department of Health and Human Services and the federal government from giving away funds, state funds or federal funds, to any organization in Texas that advocates abortion, mm -hmm. that performs abortion, or that gets you to an abortion provider and pays for it. So that would include Planned Parenthood. It also permits uh, the uh, authorities in Texas to deny Planned Parenthood all assistance, even for non-abortion related uh, services because it advocates abortions and gets the women to providers of abortions. So Planned Parenthood challenged it in federal court. A trial judge said, this is so complicated, I'm going to stop the state of Texas from enforcing the law until I hold a hearing on it. That decision was appealed to a federal appeals court, which yesterday said, it's not that complicated at all. Texas legislature can do what it wants with its money. We're going to remove your injunction on it. You can still hold a trial on Planned Parenthood's claims against the state of Texas, but Texas can enforce the law while the trial's going on. So, as of yesterday, 
no advocacy of abortion by any group that receives state funds, and no performing of abortions directly or indirectly. So they from... upheld Texas's right to make that decision about yes. their own funds. Yes, and they did so basically by saying the people have the right through their elected representatives to decide what services they want to pay for. The state can't materially interfere with abortions because the Supreme Court has said that, mm -hmm. but the state doesn't have to pay for abortions. Mm -hmm. So where does this go from here? And, and, and does this decision, you know, sort of tip you off in terms of, of you know, how this whole scenario is changing for other states and a lot of controversy. Well, you America. know, states are different. Uh, yeah. In our wonderful home state of New Jersey, a lot of our listeners will be shocked to hear this. Abortions mm -hmm. are permitted up to the moment of birth, and the state will pay for them. New Jersey has the most liberal abortion laws in the land. Mm -hmm. So essentially, abortion is regulated by each of the 50 states. Texas is obviously one of the more conservative states. New Jersey is, regrettably, uh, the most liberal. But this does indicate, if the Supreme Court upholds this, a willingness on the part of the federal judiciary to give state legislatures the option to decide how they want to spend their money rather than having federal judges tell them how to spend it. The case still goes to trial. It could have a different outcome after the trial, but during the trial and the appellate process, Texas can enforce its own law and not pay for abortions and not give monies to groups that advocate or provide abortions. So Planned Parenthood says, you know, most of what we do is outreach to, you know, women who need cancer screenings and basic, you know, health care, OBGYN health care. Uh, we do not provide abortions. We do counsel people and we do help them, you know, if they say that's what they want to do, we help them get there. That's why Governor Perry, who endorsed this law, supported it, signed it, and defended it in court, said, you know what, I'm going to the feds to get some money to, to help fund Planned Parenthood because some of what Planned Parenthood does, the state agrees with. And if pa Planned Parenthood doesn't pay for it, the state will have to pay for it. So it's in our benefit to get the federal government yes. to fund Planned Parenthood to do the non-abortion services that Planned Parenthood provides. That's the statement the governor made this morning. We'll see. Much more clear. It's a little complicated. It is. It is. Uh, but it's, it, it's a big issue, and we're going to hear more about it. So thank you very much for walking us through it this morning, Pleasure, Judge. Martha. Always good to see you. Likewise. Judge Andrew Napolitano.